So direct capture, or DR in other words. First of all, um, two things had to happen for DR to be um, not cost effective, because that didn't happen until later, but just usable to begin with, okay? Uh, not, so, not so terrible that we were like, we don't want to use this, that it doesn't show us a good image, right? So it's a couple things had to happen in order for us to, us as in science and medicine, to decide to want to use DR, okay? First were the, detect, the development of in, inexpensive detector elements, deck cells. A deck cell is to the cassette what a pixel is to the TV screen. Okay, it's a detector cell. It's a tiny little square that detects radiation. That tiny little square on the on the plate will eventually become a, a pixel on the on the TV screen. Okay, but just like TVs had, you know, uh, digital TVs had um, larger pixels to start with, and resolution was low, and it's been getting better, right? Your your resolution on your modern day, you know, flat screen TV is much better than it was even 10 years ago, okay? Um, this is because we've made the pixels on our TVs smaller, okay? The actual size of the pixels has gotten smaller, improving resolution. The size of the detector cells on these digital cassettes have gotten smaller and have been made more inexpensive. We have miniaturized them below the threshold of human vision. We can't see evidence of an individual detector cell now, okay? If we could, the image would look blocky to us. Okay. Um, direct capture has been around for actually a little, little, little while now. Uh, first system was developed in the 1980s was a type of CT, or computed tomography. Um, you know computed tomography as CAT scans, probably. Um, CT scans. It's a, it was a type of CT scan. Um, and that's really all you need to take away from this, is that the first clinically used DR system was built in the 80s, and was used to um, act as the detector cells for a type of CT scanning. Our detector cells on our plates, so what we look at here, right, this little, like, tiny little cartoon image, um, is a 4x4 four four array, 4x4 four four matrix of detector cells. So those squares, those gray squares with the other stuff inside of them, but each little square is a detector cell. Okay, we'll explain there's three parts to a detector cell. We'll explain those in a little bit, but you can see that this is a, a you know, a 4x4 four four matrix, a 4x4 four four array of detector cells. Kind of like when we talked about um, pixels last time, we gave you like a cartoon example of like a six by six matrix, right, to start with. We're just showing you a cartoon example of a four by four matrix. These detector cells in real life are about a tenth of a millimeter across. So a tenth of a millimeter square, they're teeny. The head of a pin is about a millimeter across. These are about a tenth of that. So they're below the threshold of human vision. You can't see a detector cell. These detector elements are arranged in a matrix array, just a big grid. Active matrix array is just a way to say a big grid. A flat layer of these elements containing thin film transistors. We'll talk about thin film transistors in a moment. But again, much like the computer screen displays things in pixels, the DR capture plate, the DR plate, captures the image of the patient with deck cells, detector cells. Okay, so let's just make sure we get our terminology squared away. Pixels refer to the elements of a visual image or picture. 
Pixels are picture elements. These are for display. When you look at a picture on a computer or a TV screen like you are or I am, we're looking at a bunch of pixels. We're looking at a big matrix of pixels, all of them showing a different color. Okay? And all of them working together to show us something, you know, like coherent, right? Like, like the words and, and diagrams that we're trying to show, uh, show and, and see. This term pixel is not appropriate when we're talking about the detectors on the, on the plates, okay? These detectors don't show anything. They detect things. They capture. Where a pixel puts out light, a detector captures light. So we call them deck cells for detector element. So there's pixels, there's dexels, and then somehow we pulled out of our hat this word voxel. Okay, we're going to get there. Yep. Uh, detectors, elements, capture light. Mm -hmm. Picture, pixels put out light. Mm -hmm. So pixels are used for display. Those are what are on, on your screens. Much like on your camera or the DR plate, the camera or the DR plate has detector cells. Tiny little detectors that detect light. The one on your phone's camera is sensitive to visible light. The, one on the, the ones in this big imaging plate are sensitive to x-ray light. So I can't use that detector to take a picture of someone with. I can't hold that detector up, you know, in front of someone and, and shine light at them and have it reflect off of them and get a picture of them, right? I need to use x-rays. It's only sensitive to x-rays. These are the detectors on your camera, and the detector cells are the same in that they both use tiny little microscopic almost detectors. Okay, a little a matrix of detectors. They're different in what they're sensitive to. The set detectors on your phone, sensitive to visible light. The detectors on there, sensitive to x-ray light. But they are both a flat matrix, a square or grid, if you like, of detector cells, detector elements. Okay, so let's make sure we just have that down. Deck cell is a hardware device for detecting radiation. A deck cell is a detector of light. They say radiation, but you should know that radiation comes in all forms. Visible light is a form of radiation. X-rays are a form of radiation. So it's all radiation. Dexel detector element, that's in the image receptor. Pixel, picture element, that's what the computer screen displays, uh, displays, things you, displays things using pixels. A voxel, I'll just read it and then we'll try to describe it, is a volume element within the patient. The word voxel stands for volume element. Think about it like this, right, for voxel. If I want to display it on the screen, right, let's go to the screen. We see on this, uh, this example of pixels here, right, we see some things, right? We see like the mountains, we see the birds, we see the tree, right? We see the house, yeah? All of those things are being displayed on the screen in two dimensions, yeah? There's a up and down dimension and a left and right dimension. But in reality, things aren't two-dimensional, right? Things are 3D, three-dimensional, right? So there's a third dimension that we're not seeing here, okay? So for voxel, you imagine like... Let's get a better one. Sort of. For voxel, you imagine... I don't know, take any, any one of these, right? Right, take terrible. That's just mm -hmm. awful. It's so bad. I need new markers. Let's try green again. 
for voxel, you take a square, right? One of those pixels that's on the screen, okay? And then you project in that third dimension the, the thickness of that thing, right? So everything inside of that square it, that we're seeing in two dimensions is really a three-dimensional thing, okay? Showing, uh, so what we're seeing on screen is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional structure. Does that make sense? Okay. So let me show voxel again. So on the screen, all we're going to see, right, is that little square. Mm -hmm. Yeah? But that little square represents a three-dimensional column of tissue. Okay? Everything you're looking at, right, even on here, a little square out of here, right, that square represents, I see a little square blocked off, that square represents a three-dimensional column, volume of tissue, of tissue. A voxel is just volume element telling you this is your column of tissue that you're looking at, okay? The detector captures all the information about the volume element, the voxel of tissue. I was gonna almost scrolled up on that screen. Can't do that. So a voxel of tissue is detected by one detector cell and is displayed as a single pixel on the screen. Okay, so there's voxel, there's dexel, there's pixel. Voxel is a piece of the patient that we're trying to look at. Dexel is how we're detecting it, and a pixel is how we're displaying it. To form a DR image, information from different voxels within the patient are collected by the deck cells of the imaging machine, of the plate of the image uh, receptor, and the computer processes those dex the information in those dexels to become pixels on the computer screen. Okay, so I've said it a couple of times, and those of you who've been here the longest can help. Um, X-rays are a type of what? Ray. They're a type of ray, or how are, how, how are X-rays similar to light, like visible light? They cast shadows, right? So visible light casts a shadow, right? X-rays cast a shadow of the inside of the body, right? They're the same kind of thing, in other words. X-rays and visible light, and radio waves, and microwaves, right, and ultraviolet light are all the same kind of thing. They're all electromagnetic radiation. In other words, they're all forms of light, okay? X-rays and visible light are all forms of light, okay? You can't see X-rays. You also can't see ultraviolet. You also can't see infrared or radio waves, right? You can see visible light, though, okay? The fact that you can or can't see it really doesn't matter, okay? They're all the same kind of thing. They're all light, okay? When you take a picture on your phone, light hits the detector, gets the, and the information gets processed, and you get a picture on your screen, right? When you take an x-ray, those x-rays pass through the patient, the, the, those x-rays hit the image receptor and the computer does some processing and then produces a picture on the screen, okay? In all forms of digital imaging, whether x-ray digital imaging or literally like a photograph digital imaging, okay, we have to take the x-ray light or the visible light, in our case x-rays though, so let's focus on that. We have to take the x-ray light, we have to convert that light into an electronic signal because that's what computers, computers don't read light, right? Computers read electronic signals, okay? So we have to take and convert light into electricity, okay? That's what detector cells do, okay? Detector cells are conversion devices. They're converting, they're detecting visible light, or they're detecting x-ray light, converting that into an amount of electricity, and then sending that to the computer and the computer reads electric current, okay? 
So we have to learn how our detector cells, what they're made of, and how they go about doing this conversion. Okay, conversion is going to be the big the big idea here. Okay, how we take and convert X-rays, X-ray light, into electricity. Okay, so a deck cell. So now we we you know we ignore the whole grid, the whole array of deck cells, and now we focus on on a single single teeny tiny nearly microscopic dexel, okay? A single one of them. And the face of it has three things. A semiconductor detector surface. We'll explain these, don't worry. A semiconductor detector surface, a microscopic capacitor, and a thin film transistor. What do all of those things mean? So here's how you think about it. So in, uh, let me just show. In green, we see the detector surface. Bottom right corner is the thing called the capacitor. Top left corner is the thing called the thin film transistor. The capacitor is a battery. Not a long-term battery, a short-term battery. The thin film transistor is a switch. Switches can be on or off. So what happens here, this semiconductor detection surface, semiconductors, let me stop, pause for just a moment here. Um, do you guys know the difference between, as far as electricity is concerned, between a um, conductor of electricity and an insulator? You've heard of those two terms, conductors and insulators, right? Um, are you a conductor of electricity? Yeah, absolutely, right? You, you hold a fork and stick it in a wall socket, right? Don't do that. And what happens to you? You get electrocuted, right? Because you can conduct electricity, okay? Why, why, by, why by the way, do you conduct electricity very well? You guys know? You're mostly water, right? And water is a great conductor of electricity. Um, but let's say you are an electrician, right? You go out to your job site and you wear your big rubber boots, okay? They wear big, thick-soled rubber boots, okay? If they happen to get electrocuted, right, um, hopefully those rubber boots stop the electric current from reaching the ground and grounding them, right, um, keeping them from becoming severely injured, right? Um, they can still get very, very hurt. But uh, those rubber boots act as an insulator, okay? You know, I got my computer cable right here. It's not my computer cable. This is my computer cable, right? And uh, this thing's charging my computer right now, right? So electricity is running from that power strip up through these wires and into my computer. Why am I not being electrocuted holding this right now? The rubber coating, right? Um, so, but I, I'm electrically conductive, right? So if I touch an electric current, I can get electrocuted, right? Uh, inside of here, inside of this rubber housing, there's wire, that wire is electrically conductive, but between me and the wire is a coating of rubber, okay? Now, rubber is made of atoms, so is the wire, okay? The difference between them is the atoms in the rubber like to hold on to their electrons. They don't like to let electricity flow very easily, okay? The atoms in that wire and the atoms in my body like to let their electrons move around. In other words, they like to conduct electricity, okay? but the rubber doesn't. So the rubber between me and the wire keeps me from getting electrocuted, okay? In other words, the rubber insulates the electric current um, from me, okay? Okay, so there are conductors, things that conduct electricity easily, okay? They let electricity flow easily. Examples of conductors include copper and gold and other metals, okay? Examples of insulators include rubber, and glass, and dry wood, okay? You've never seen a computer cable uh, housing made of dry wood, right? I'm sorry, made, made of, um, well, actually, that would be a great, great, it should, we should make them out of dry wood. That's, that's the moral of the story. Um, but any, anyways, there are insulators, things that uh, don't conduct electricity well, and there are conductors, things that do conduct electricity well. In between, so the only reason I say that is because in between those two categories, are semiconductors. 
It's what the word semiconductor means. It means it, eh, it kind of conducts electricity, okay? Or, and this is more, more of what we mean, a semiconductor will conduct electricity under very specific circumstances, such as when the right kind of light hits it, okay? So semiconductors, there are many different kinds. Silicon is a great example of a semiconductor. Um, but semiconductors, which your phone detectors are made of, your, your, the detector cells on your phone, the detector cells on these imaging plates, are made of materials that conduct electricity under very specific circumstances, okay? Like when they're exposed to the right kind of light. Yes? Is that, is that silicon? Silicon. Like silicon? Silicon. Silicon is, is one of our uh, elements. Silicone is a little bit of a different thing. Okay. Um, silicon. Silicon, yeah. yeah. Good. Um, Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, semiconductors it conduct electricity when exposed to certain conditions. Like if you heat them up or cool them down, different ones will do different things at different times. Ours conduct electricity, the ones in these de detector plates, these conduct electricity when they're exposed to x-rays. Okay, so if I turn this plate on and just leave it out in the room with the lights on in the room, nothing happens. Because the detector cells, even though light's hitting those detector cells, those detector cells are not sensitive to visible light. They don't conduct electricity when exposed to visible light. These detector cells that we use conduct electricity when exposed to x-rays. Okay. Very good. I got a question. Yes. What is uh, microscopic? Capacitor? Yeah. Good. I, I, I am getting there. Oh, I promise sorry. you. No, okay. you're, you're, you're on the right track, though. No, not yet. Uh, okay. So, okay. So, again, these, the, this whole grid, right, this whole plate is made up of a bunch of teeny tiny, nearly microscopic squares. Okay? Those squares have three things. The most important thing to start with is the detector surface, the thing that, when x-rays hit it, will conduct a little bit of electricity, will generate a small amount of electric charge. Okay? This is the conversion. Remember, conversion is what what's the important thing here. X-rays hit the detector surface, and a little bit of electric current happens. Okay? Now, in the bottom right-hand side of this, of this uh, detector cell is something called a microscopic capacitor or storage capacitor. When this detector surface gets hit by X-rays and generates a small amount of electricity, that electricity charges the capacitor. It charges the battery, okay? We're talking about teeny tiny amounts of electric current and a teeny tiny battery, but it charges it, okay? That battery gets charged. And then the battery will just sit there charged for a tiny fraction of time until this switch called the thin film transistor turns on, okay? The computer tells that switch when to turn on because of all of those detector cells all turn on and send their signal at the same time to the computer, the computer can't tell, okay, which one, the, which one it's coming from. So the computer has to tell, you know, the computer has to tell this cell up here, turn on and send me your current, okay? Then the, and read it, the computer reads it. Then the next one over, turn on and send me your current. And the next one over, turn on and send me your current. And it's gonna read the electric current coming from each one of these microscopic detectors one, the x-rays hit the detector. Two, the capacitor stored the electric current generated by the detector. And three, the switch turned on and sent that electric current to the computer. Okay? Then the whole thing is discharged. After it's whole discharged, ready to be used again. Okay? Each tiny little detector cell has to get exposed, store some electricity in the capacitor, and then send that electricity to the computer in, as electric current. Okay? The way the computer knows how much exposure each detector cell receives is by how much electric current goes, uh, comes from each detector cell, right? A detector cell that received no x-rays will send no current to the computer, okay? A detector cell that received a lot of exposure will send more current to the computer, okay? And the computer will take and tell by depending on how much current each, how much electricity each cell sends it, 
it'll develop a shade of gray for that amount of, ele of, of electric current. So you notice we've converted, we've converted X-ray light into electricity. The computer used that, that information about the electric current and then took and used that information to display a shade of gray on the computer screen. Okay. Okay, so three parts. A detector surface that converts x-rays into electricity, semiconductor. A capacitor to store that electricity. And a thin film transistor to turn on and send that current to the computer when it's time to. This is why it takes like a couple of seconds, but not like minutes to get the image up on the screen. A couple of seconds because each one of those detector cells has to send their current to the computer. This happens very fast, but it has to happen in an organized manner. All right, so here's something you're gonna to need to uh, retain and remember. You need to remember what kind of semiconductors are used, okay? Meaning what materials are used, okay? This is the first one. X, um, Direct conversion systems will take x-rays and convert to electricity. Those are made of a material called selenium. Direct conversion DR, and I know we're throwing a lot of, around a lot of jargon here. Direct conversion DR takes x-rays and turns it into electric current. Now, as I'm going to talk about in a moment here, there's a, 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 an additional kind of DR called indirect conversion DR. This was the first kind to be created. This kind takes x-rays, converts it into visible light, and then uses that visible light to expose the detector. I have pictures in a moment here. All DR systems either use selenium or silicon. If you have a system that uses silicon as its detector, as its semiconductor, it's not sensitive to x-ray light. So you have to convert the x-ray light into another kind of light. If you have a, so like your phones, your little camera chips on your phones, the detectors are all made of silicon because your phones are sensitive to visible light. Okay, let me backtrack one step here. If you look at the detector, this I know it's like a cartoon drawing of the detector, but if you look at the detector, there's an area that's in, shown in green that's the detector surface, but then the detector itself is a little larger than that, right? The green doesn't take up the whole square area, okay? So here's a problem. This is, this is one hurdle that um, technology engineering is trying to overcome right now. The thin film transistor switch is a, is a hardware component. The storage capacitor is also a hardware component, okay? These two components are currently as small as they possibly can be. We don't have technology currently to make these um, two pieces of, of hardware smaller, okay? We can make the detector surface as big or as small as we want, but the storage capacitor and thin film transistors are as small as they possibly can be. What you would want is, just like on a TV screen, you want small pixels, right? What you want is you want your detectors to be as small as possible, okay? But what you maybe will notice here is if I make the overall square smaller, as a percentage of the total amount of space occupied by the thin film transistor and storage capacitor, if I make the square smaller, more of the space will be taken up by storage capacitor and thin film transistor, less of it taken up by the, de the detector. Okay? If I make the square smaller, I will lose detector surface. So by making the square smaller, we want to get we would get better spatial resolution. But as we make it smaller and smaller and smaller, we would lose detector surface. Okay, this is a problem. And so currently, these um, detector cells are about as small as they can be. 
This is referred to as the efficiency factor for the deck cell. This is measured by physicists as a number called detective quantum efficiency, and it really is simple, as simple as this. It's just the percentage of the Dexel's square area, the area on the Dexel, dedicated to the semiconductor. What you would want is you would want all of the detector, all of the deck cell to be all detector, right? But it can't be because there's two other pieces that have to be in there: the switch, transistor, and the capacitor. It's a problem. Because it, so let me show a picture here. These two deck cells shown side by side are one smaller than the other, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. The larger one will give us worse spatial resolution than the smaller one. Okay? The smaller our deck cells are, the better our spatial resolution is. But this small one will use the same size capacitor and the same size thin film transistor as the large one, okay? So as you make them smaller, the capacitor and thin film transistor, the battery and switch, will take up more and more and more of the overall area, okay? And we will lose detector surface, making these uh, less and less efficient. So as we, if we were to make the detector cells smaller, we would gain spatial resolution, gain detail, but start to lose efficiency, okay? Start to, uh, they would require more and more and more radiation to make the exposures work, okay? So currently, we're at the limit where the detector cells are as small as they can be, and spatial resolution is as good as it can be without making the exposures um, overly overly high okay so once technology catches up and we can make the battery capacitor and switch transistor smaller then these things will get better okay currently they're at the smallest they can be if we keep making these detector cells smaller which in principle we could do we will lose detector surface Let's pause and take a five-minute break. I'm going to open that door. <laughs>